Well, welcome back to the Wattscraft 3.3 meter uh, mini boat build with the Haunted Turbo. Took a few days off, went up to McCall, went snowmobiling. If you watched my video on the uh, BD Extreme Protect Air install, um, I'm not saying that thing solved all the problems, but I didn't have a problem with that bog. And I, because I, I, I wasn't into like all that deep of snow, but we're definitely taking some powder shots to the face over up over the cowling. So, uh, as far as I can say, it worked and um, no bog whatsoever. So, back to the build. Um, I have been, uh, <laughs> I, I don't know, I think I lost my brain when I was in McCall, took those few days off, and I just feel like my fabrication skills went downhill. So, my, the fuel tank was pretty straightforward and is uh, simply a rectangle, and man, I just feel like it kicked my ass. So, I was originally going to try to um, reuse the Honda um, tank, however, it was too wide to fit in the in the engine bay here, either side. Uh, it just wasn't going to fit. So um, I was kind of bummed about that because I was actually looking at saving some time and just being able to reuse that thing. So I had on this fuel tank, uh, RS Racecraft sells these little uh, filler caps that are pretty nice. They just um, nice and heavy duty, big opening uh, for filling. So that was one of the easier parts. I made my own uh, vent line just out of some... Uh, some straight, uh, straight stock and put a little um, flange on the end of it for a uh, um, for the hose clamp to grab onto. And then this thing was the, the bigger issue was making something that fit the Honda um, main pickup, the return lines, the uh, sending unit, all that kind of stuff. So I another thing that I do, I hold on to all my pieces, especially thicker stuff. So um, the 5 16 plate that I cut out of the bottom of the boat for the pump flange, I've used brackets, I've made tons of brackets out of that. And because it has some thickness to it, good for uh, drilling and tapping. So inside of the tank, there's 5 16 um, and I weld it in three spots around there to hold it in and then went. So when I um, put the sending unit, pick up all that stuff, it clamped down nice and flush to the fuel tank. So. That was, that's been my biggest accomplishment. And so then, um, really the next thing to do, I just have a couple more hoses to connect, but I'm not uh, in a rush to do that. So on to the next biggie is the electrical. And I kind of was looking at it and I realized, okay, it doesn't really make sense to do the electrical until I get the midship bulkhead in. So the midship bulkhead is now in, just uh, put that in uh, about half an hour ago. The reason for that is this this thing is very useful for mounting some of the electrical stuff to it so it's up high it's dry it's under this lip so there's a couple other little parts that are going to get brackets tomorrow and i'm pretty excited because i'm so far i'm pretty sure that the only thing i'm going to have to extend on this entire harness is the remember what i said talked about the uh the uh, little blue tape stuff is the fuel pump. So this thing has got to run back there to the tank. And it's because think about it on a jet ski, the fuel um, tank is pretty much right under the steering wheel. So this is all the main cluster. So this thing already routes all the way up there. And um, this is the, the, the dash. It plugs in right there. So that's going to reach across there. The star switch, the warning horn, and the steering position sensor. Those are all going to be able to be tucked in in there and that's man that's i'm pretty stoked about that i think there's only what is there three maybe four wires in that fuel pump and uh sending unit um thing so only one wire that i'm gonna have to extend i decided that um on the jet ski all these the the main electrical box and all that stuff was on the aft uh right hand corner of the ski however the starter is over on this side and some of those cables were gonna get a little bit long. I was originally thinking I was gonna put it over there, but some of these uh, starter cables and stuff. So I've decided I'm gonna mount these on this side, put the battery somewhere right around here, and then short route to get to the starter that's um, that's up under there somewhere. Um, so that is it. I don't, like I said, I'm not gonna have to extend any of those things, just have to build a couple of brackets, and that should be done tomorrow. So, um, if you notice, I still don't have the um, the windscreen on. 
just because it doesn't need to be on. So I'm in no rush to get that stuff done. I'm more concerned with getting the plumbing, the fuel, the water, the electrical, all those major systems and components in, and then I'll uh, look at finishing up the boat. I did, this midship bulkhead is pretty much almost touching. It's short about a quarter inch of the front of the uh, motor. So I, I put in some seats and kind of just temporarily kind of to see what kind of room I had. So I was sure to slide that thing his back as far as I could. Um, for welding that thing, here's, I obviously these are kind of a, uh, kind of a visual spot and high strength. I don't like putting a weld right in the middle of my big fat uh, side. So I put a weld down here towards the bottom because it's close to the bottom plate. And then I also put one up here because there's a bend in the side. So just a short inch and a half, two inch weld there. And then welded up there. So that's uh, that's how I approach that. And um, I think that RS Racecraft does something similar. They don't weld it completely down the side. There's there's no really use to that. And you're going to get that little weld crease dimple in there if you do that. I can, let's see if I can really even see it. There is there is a little bit right there. I can feel it. And then just a little bit down here where the side comes in. But the biggest thing is I don't have a big dimple going right across uh, the big side there. So anyway, thanks for watching. I'm going to uh, keep plugging away at this thing. Let's see, today's Thursday. I'll get a full day on it tomorrow, probably a partial day on Saturday and Sunday, uh, doomsday. I got to go back to work. So I got to start studying, get ready for those simulators and uh, study up on the max. Uh, be flying that thing here in March, I think is when we're going to first start flying those things. So Keep watching, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell so you get the notifications. And by all means, uh, copy and paste the uh, link to these if you like what you're seeing. And as I, I think I've noticed this or mentioned this before, this boat will be for sale. It's a Honda Turbo, 165 stock horsepower and a Wattscraft 3.3 meter boat. Um, it's gonna be for sale as soon as it's done. And I uh, take it out on the water, do a little testing. And I think that the price on this is going to be nineteen nine, and the uh, the Skookum with the Yamaha um, is gonna, it's uh, priced at twenty nine nine, and I think that those are fairly pretty fair prices. I've been seeing some boats, I don't know, not naming any names, but I saw a boat with a with a two stroke Kawasaki for thirty five thousand dollars. It's a I was like, holy cow. The thing must be gold plated, but whatever. I think the prices are fair. And I'm not, like I said, I'm not trying to um, get rich <laughs> building these things. Quick side note, years ago, I contemplated starting a boat building uh, business. Small boats is my passion. And I realized there's really not a whole ton of money or back then there wasn't anyways, before these kind of mini boats came out, especially short outboard boats, 16, 17 footers. They're just, they're, everybody thinks that they're free <laughs> and and the the cost of the materials is the cost of the boat but anyway so i digress um thanks for watching and we'll uh we'll keep plugging along and hopefully get this thing on the water soon